Typically, I would not make a video analyzing any one piece of media, but the children's show Arthur was not a typical piece of media. It was iconic, transcendent, and poignant in a way that few, if any, other children's shows have ever been. When I say this, I'm not being blinded by nostalgia. The show wasn't just great for the 90s or whatever. It was actually even better than any of us remember. Because looking at the program as an adult, you can see how Arthur wades into issues that other shows wouldn't have dared discuss. Arthur explores serious, heavy topics in a way that is realistic and unpatronizing to children. As the show discusses these things, they are often veiled in a way that makes them digestible and understandable to a younger audience, but it's never patronizing. It's a lot easier to appreciate these qualities through the lens of adulthood. There's no better example of this than Arthur's 9-11 episode. In these 22 minutes, the show discusses survivor's guilt, intense PTSD, and so much more in a way that is really beautiful. The episode is shocking in how well written it is. This wasn't really a one-time experiment either. During its run, Arthur touched on subjects like gay rights, misinformation, book banning, and even the George Floyd murder. But you probably clicked on this video to hear about the 9-11 episode, so let's start there. So a year after the 9-11 attacks, PBS aired the Arthur episode called April 9th. This episode was made as a response to 9-11. Viewing as an adult, this is easily the best episode of the show. I'd argue it's one of the greatest animated things ever put on television. Now, the episode doesn't feature the attacks or the Twin Towers falling. Instead, it uses a school fire as an allegory. This is absolutely brilliant for two reasons. First, there's an element of, if you know, you know. Families directly impacted by 9-11 can connect with the episode. But secondly, it doesn't alienate anyone who wasn't immediately impacted by 9-11. In fact, the episode specifically speaks to dealing with tragedies that you didn't understand or even see firsthand. The episode operates through a series of subplots. Each student reacts to the school fire differently. And each of these reactions represents a different response to trauma. It tells the viewers, no matter how you're feeling, it's okay to not be okay. So the episode starts with the fire at school. The children are all evacuated, and we immediately see how they respond to the incident. Arthur, Sue Ellen, and Buster all have compelling stories in this episode, but certainly Binky's is the most poignant. Arthur's father, a caterer, was working an event at the school when the fire broke out. We see Arthur having been evacuated, waiting in the school parking lot as firefighters go into the building. His father is nowhere in sight. Arthur is crying and begging the firemen to let him into the building because he wants to go find his dad. Of course, they tell Arthur it's not safe. Eventually, Arthur's father exits the building with a firefighter, and he's absolutely fine. But Arthur is not. Arthur spends the rest of the episode worrying every time his dad leaves the house, worrying that his father may not come back. He even fakes sick at one point in an effort to get his dad to stay home. Arthur's father teaches him some coping mechanisms and assures him that it's the father's job to worry about the son, not the other way around. Through a healthy dialogue with his father, Arthur begins to worry less when his father leaves for work. This is a great little story, but I actually think Arthur's part in the episode is probably the least compelling of them all. Sue Ellen is generally a minor character in Arthur, but in this episode she gets a really great story. As the child of a diplomat, Sue Ellen was known to spend her life traveling. She was always moving around the world and she kept a scrapbook of all of her travel memories. Sue Ellen is forced to leave her scrapbook in the school when she's evacuating. It gets destroyed in the fire. She weeps as she sees the burned remains of her scrapbook. Although this most obviously represents the things destroyed in 9-11, it could certainly be extended to loss of life, too. Throughout the episode, Sue Ellen's friend, Muffy, repeatedly tries to replace her scrapbook with a newer, nicer one. She's really confused when this doesn't fix everything for Sue Ellen. You see, Muffy just doesn't really understand Sue Ellen's trauma. Because how could she? A lifetime of experiences have led up to that trauma. Although Muffy's efforts mostly fail, Sue Ellen does find comfort in the attempts themselves. Even if other people can't fix her trauma, the fact that they cared enough to try helped Sue Ellen through her grieving process. 
in what is almost a tear-worthy moment, Sue Ellen eventually starts a new scrapbook with the one Muffy gave her. Sue Ellen puts the only remaining piece of her old one on the new scrapbook's cover. It's the perfect distillation of moving forward without forgetting the past. Just like not everyone witnessed or even understood 9-11, the episode writes in a subplot about this exact scenario. Arthur's best friend Buster was late to school and missed the fire entirely. Initially, Buster seems annoyed and a little sad to have missed the biggest event of the year. After their school burned, the students have to temporarily attend another school across town. When Buster gets to this school, he starts just making things up about the fire. He tells these wild stories even though he wasn't there before eventually being called out by Arthur himself. Buster goes home and asks his mother why he doesn't feel as bad about the fire as other kids, and if it's okay that the incident isn't really affecting him very much emotionally. His mother assures Buster that his feelings are valid. He didn't actually see the fire, and that could be why he isn't feeling as bad about it as other kids. And that, she reminds him, is completely okay. This is an absolutely beautiful and starkly relevant message about 9-11. Because everyone knew it happened, but much of Arthur's audience probably experienced it in the same way that Buster experienced the fire. After the fact, indirectly, maybe not even understanding it at all. The episode is telling kids that it's okay to be less distraught than other people. Buster visits the school janitor in the hospital who broke his leg in the fire. Throughout the rest of the episode, Buster cares for and befriends the now disabled janitor. The janitor eventually decides that he can't really work anymore, so he moves away to be closer to his daughter, who will act as his full-time caretaker. Buster lives with his single mother in the series, so it hurts him to lose this new, older male figure. This brilliantly shows how a traumatic incident can impact people, even if they weren't really involved in the incident itself. These things hit everyone differently. Lastly, and I think most interestingly, Binky is the only student who actually witnessed the fire. The other kids saw some smoke, but they were evacuated pretty quickly. Meanwhile, Binky saw the actual flames. Initially, he tells his friends he wasn't even scared. It was no big deal, he says. But later, it's revealed that Binky is experiencing pretty severe PTSD from the fire. As Binky sits at home after the fire, watching TV, he breaks down when flames are shown on a television program. He gets sweaty, he feels hot, and he runs out of the room in fear. Making Binky the one who goes through this was a smart bit of writing. He is known throughout the show as the tough kid. He's even a year older than most of the kids in Arthur's class. When the kids start going to the other school, Binky pulls the fire alarm and clocks to the second how long it takes for the fire department to arrive. When confronted by the principal, Binky has a moment that I think is so absolutely true to life. The principal asks Binky why he pulled the fire alarm, and Binky replies, I don't know. This is more really brilliant writing. Adults may recognize things as trauma responses, but kids don't always know why they do what they do. The episode empathizes with children by making that clear. In a lesser show, Binky would have had some moment of realization to put a nice bow on things. But instead, this part is kind of left open to interpretation. It's never really said why Binky pulled the fire alarm. There's no closure there. As punishment, Binky has to go pick up trash in a park with a local garbage man. The man, as it turns out, is a former firefighter. He tells Binky that he was afraid when he saw his first fire. Again, in a lesser show, this would be the easy resolution. Still, though, Binky refuses to talk about the fire. After the damage is repaired, the kids return to their school. Binky hallucinates as soon as he walks in the building. He sees the school full of smoke, he gets sweaty, and he runs out of the building in tears. Again, this subplot is just so smart. We have a character who we all know is the toughest, roughest kid in school, being emotionally impacted more than anyone else after the fire. After Binky gets outside, the garbage man finds him crying. He listens to Binky, talks with him about the fire, and shows Binky that talking through trauma is how he can work through it. Garbage Man reveals that after seeing his first fire, he actually wasn't just scared. He went through a very similar experience as Binky. This tells Binky and the audience that if a firefighter was scared of a fire, it's okay for you to be scared of things too. 
At the end of the episode, all of the kids are on the road to a resolution. They don't all feel better, which is important. Another brilliant piece of writing. The show doesn't say that it's easy or fast to get over trauma, but rather it's a process. It may not happen within 22 minutes or any set amount of time, but you can feel better after bad things happen. This level of nuance and emotional intelligence is really staggering to see in a children's show. In 2021, Arthur was canceled. Not concluding they don't make them like they used to. But I do wonder if a show could approach, quote, grown-up topics today like Arthur did, or if that show would just become fodder for some made-up culture war. It's a bit of a moot point. Kids today deal with wildly different issues than I did, and those issues will likely continue to compound. One of the strengths of Arthur was that it thrived on, here's the world you're going into, type messaging. Today, the future feels much more difficult to predict. I don't know if a show like Arthur could exist today. I really don't. But I'm glad it did when I was a kid.